the things we love most that destroy us. Snow, you know, obviously in the original movies, uh, he does some pretty awful things. Uh, you know, in this story, of course, you want to add layers to him, give him more nuance. But was it sort of a dance to figure out uh, how to have some sympathetic parts to him, but not make him too sympathetic? I think that the big challenge, you know, for us was a knowing that he's the villain of the original stories, wanting to make sure that we create a character that we can get the audience behind an audience empathizing with him, rooting for him, rooting for his relationships, but making sure, and this is the, what really took the work is making sure that while doing that, we're still seeding in his ambition, his greed, his sort of need for power, all those things so that when he goes dark, it feels truthful and honest and believable. You want to understand like how this person became who they are. You want to have emotional access to him, the ability to sort of see the world through his eyes, but you also don't want to make excuses for him. You don't want to uh, justify his actions. You're just seeking understanding as opposed to trying to get everybody just to fall in love with him. You look like you shouldn't be here. I shouldn't, but I'm your mentor. A rebel. There's the natural connection of Snow, of course, but you know this is set a few decades before the other film. So in what ways did you want to set this apart? Uh, and in what ways did you want to tie them together? Were there sort of new themes you wanted to explore? You know, Suzanne is a very thematically driven writer. And so from the early days, you know, one of some of our first conversations, she was like, so, How's your fluency in the Enlightenment thinkers? To then be able to sort of take this deeper look at these characters and to say that if you're somebody like, you know, Dr. Gall, who believes that the Hunger Games shows humanity at its core, that is who we are, that left to our own devices, we will tear each other apart, versus a somebody like Sejanus or somebody like Tigris or even Lucy Gray, who's able to sort of see the good in people. And in the case of Sejanus, who believes that like, you know, our government's role is to protect our, our individual rights and to protect our liberties and to and that left to their own devices, if protected, people will do good things, not bad things. And in this time where we tend to be very distrustfully of each other, very comfortable with jumping on the polarization chain train because it's much easier to like know who you hate than to actually have to hold complex competing ideas at the same time and so to have material that allowed us to sort of explore those complexities felt like a real gift and a very timely gift the narrative of telling the story uh, origin story of a villain is something new to this completely different than the other stories and then the fun on the world building side right is that we're doing a period piece to the other movies right we're, we're like yeah. sort of showing not only the origin of snow but the origin of the games how the games are changing and uh, how we're sort of including the audience in the participation of the games the origin of some of the music like the hanging tree and the songs the origin of relationships like tigress and and snow and so that you know if you're a fan and you watch this movie and you go back, suddenly you get new meaning to a lot of the people and dialogue and moments that you can see in the earlier films and stories. Let me ask you one final time. What are the Hunger Games for? So Suzanne, of course, wrote this book since you wrapped up the first four films. Have there been conversations about what you could do next with the Hunger Games? And would you want to wait for Suzanne or is there ways you could branch it off in different uh, directions? For me, you know, Suzanne's the North Star. Um, if there's a story she wants to tell, I'm on board. I would be honored and thrilled to make as many stories as Suzanne feels are worth telling because she doesn't crank them out. She tells the stories that mean something to her that she thinks have something to say, characters who she thinks are resonant. And she has an incredible sense of both history and the way history sort of rhymes with the present. So if she has more stories to tell, I'm down. If she doesn't, I'm lucky to have gotten to, told, to tell this many so far. I said it after Mockingjay that if she, if she wrote another book, I'm like, I'm in. And she wrote another book and I was in. So now I have to wait and see like what she comes up with. And again, because she starts from theme and I think that's what gives the movies their weight and the meat and the gravitas and, and the relevance. Um, if she writes another one, I'm in. 